Curtis from Energy Fuels. Everyone has energy fuels on their radar right now as a leading critical mineral supplier in North America. Can you please describe for our audience the high neodymium presidium content in monazite and how this provides energy fuels with a cost processing advantage over all your competitors? Absolutely. Thank you, Tracy, for having me on. So energy fuels focus on monazite sand is a major advantage that energy fuels has over a number of other uh, rare earth companies uh, for a whole host of reasons. Uh, probably the biggest reason is that it is simply worth more money than other rare earth bearing ores. It has higher concentrations of NDPR uh, that is needed in uh, permanent rare earth magnets. Uh, they're used in EVs and uh, wind turbines and that sort of thing. Um, it also has far higher concentrations of the heavy rare earths. Uh, versus other minerals like basnesite that other uh, companies uh, focus on. Um, now, I will say that a lot of other companies do focus on basnesite because it has lower concentrations of uh, uranium and thorium than monazite, uh, but it is less valuable and it is harder to process than monazite. It's more expensive to process than monazite. Uh, but again, uranium and thorium is no issue for us because we're doing all of this at a uranium mill. Um, finally, monazite sands are uh, produced as a low cost a uh, byproduct of heavy mineral sand mining that primarily target titanium and zirconium minerals. Uh, therefore, producing monazite sand is simply uh, the, the, the marginal cost of concentrating the monazite uh, and, and the shipping costs, uh, while the primary mining costs are borne by the titanium and zirconium mining. And of course, I just, I think it's a good segue to the 800 pound gorilla in the room that many people who are new to the rare earth industry may not be aware of, which is basically thorium. And um, can you talk to me about the benefits, what the advantages that energy fuels has with regards to thorium? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you said, that is an 800 pound gorilla in the room when it comes to rare earth processing. Most major rare earth bearing ores, when you dig them up out of the ground, have naturally occurring uranium and thorium in them. And then when you start processing those ores and concentrating the rare earths, you start concentrating uranium and thorium, which becomes a big problem for other companies. Now, Energy Fuels is using an existing uranium mill uh, to uh, process rare earth bearing ores, primarily uh, monazite. And again, it's a, we have the licenses, we have the capabilities, we have the infrastructure to be able to deal with the thorium and deal with the other radionuclides. So that is a massive problem, uh, massive problem for others, but it's a major uh, benefit for energy fuels. Uh, in fact, we're able to monetize the uranium, and we could potentially monetize the thorium if there if that market uh, matures further. So again, this is something that a lot of people lose sight of when they start uh, talk, talking about rare earths. Um, people need to ask, what are you going to do with the thorium? What are you going to do with the uranium? And what is your what is your plan? And what is your what is your licensing say about that? And of course, as a senior professional in our industry sector, I'm certain that you get asked questions all the time. We're talking critical minerals, critical minerals. Can you tell me what's a question that you wish people would ask you more about energy fuels? You know, I, I think that it boils down to why will you guys succeed in rare earths where uh, so many others have failed? And again, they're the, 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 the story is littered with a lot of companies that have, you know, failed to meet expectations or really failed altogether. Um, and it really boils down to the fact that energy fuels has a number of inherent advantages when it comes to processing uh, rare earth bearing ores and producing advanced rare earth uh, materials. A big one that I just talked about is our ability to handle the thorium and the uranium that occurs naturally with, with, with pretty much all rare earth bearing ores uh, when you dig them up out of the ground. Um, Again, we are using an existing uranium mill uh, to process these rare earth ores. And a lot of the same processing techniques that you use for uh, rare earths, we've been using for uranium uh, and vanadium oxides for the last 40 years at our uh, facility. And that includes solvent extraction. Uh, solvent extraction is the proven, uh, the proven processing technology that is used uh, to produce separated rare earth oxides. Uh, including NDPR oxide, terbium oxide, dysprosium oxide. And we have 40 plus years of experience uh, deploying uh, SX, solvent extraction, to produce high purity uranium and vanadium oxides. 
And so we've been piloting uh, rare earth separation for many years in our lab at the mill. And so right now we are investing uh, about $25 million to install a rare earth separation uh, circuit in the in the White Mesa Mill in Utah. Um, where we have a high degree of confidence that it's going to work just just fine. It'll be uh, ready to uh, turn on in uh, the first quarter of 2024, and uh, it'll have the capacity to produce about a thousand metric tons of NDPR oxide per year, which would be enough NDPR for roughly 500,000 to a million EVs per year, for instance. So again, there's a there's a whole host of other reasons why we think that we're going to succeed in this uh, industry, but um, uh, but. But uh, it's uh, it's something that we have a high degree of confidence in. Well, as always, Curtis, it's such a pleasure. We hope you'll join us as frequently as we can get you on Investor News. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy.